Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we've got some exciting news about the next update for Foxhole. Foxhole Inferno. This is the full 1.0 release of the game that will officially take Foxhole out of beta. And I got a chance to play around with a lot of the new toys. We are still waiting on the full patch notes for 1.0, which will be live next week, and I'll make sure to make a detailed patch overview video when that is up. But I did want to at least share what I now know. From flamethrowers to super tanks and player built industrial zones and trains, Foxhole Inferno will be absolutely transformative to the game, and I cannot wait until until it goes live. But before we dive into that, if you end up liking the video, do give it a like, subscribe for more, and don't forget to check out the live streams over at twitch.tv slash moidog, where I'll be streaming the war when it does drop on September 28th, as well as checking out all the new stuff in the dev branch starting early next week. Alright, so there's a lot to unpack with Inferno, so here's a brief overview of the new mechanics, gameplay, and items, and I'll include timestamps and chapters below if you simply want to just jump around to a specific thing you're interested in. I also want to take this moment to say that although we were able to get a sneak peek, most things in this version of the game are probably just having placeholder value, so please don't take any damage, range, production stats, and other performance details too seriously. We will have a public dev branch live for everyone to test things out and the devs to tweak things based on your player feedback starting on September 13th. So for example, when you see a vehicle get almost one shot by some ammo, just relax. That might be changed almost entirely by the time this does release in a month. To kick it off, this wouldn't be an Inferno update if there wasn't fire. And one of the biggest changes to Foxhole is the introduction of the new fire mechanics, and that starts with the flamethrowers. Each faction will get their own infantry flamethrower that has a handheld firing mechanism that can be equipped in your primary slot, as well as the fuel tank backpack ammo that is equipped independently as well. Playing around with the flamethrower is amazing, and as you can see, it makes extremely quick work of infantry. I love how the flame just looks and reacts to the environment, and especially if you are to kind of do a little left and right movement and how it flows back and forth, but then especially how the charred bodies look afterwards. It's gruesome, and it's awesome because a flamethrower is supposed to be threatening, and having infantry die and be charred to a crisp in about a second is extremely crazy to see. Once you're out of juice, which you can see in the top left, the backpack disappears, and you'll need to find some more if you want to continue lighting things on fire. There are also a number of new flame tank variants, ranging from smaller flame armored cars and tankettes, to larger light tanks, and even a heavy tank variant for the wardens. They all take a new type of ammo, flame ammo. These are large drums that are classified as heavy weapons and can be picked up and submitted individually into the inventory of the tank and then reloaded, not unlike other heavy ammo like 150s, 250s, or 300mm storm cannon rounds. Once you've reloaded the vehicle, it acts like the flamethrower and will work until the drum runs out, which you can see in the top left. The devs have stated that these will have pretty devastating effects to buildings and bunkers, and I know many people are curious to see if they will just engulf everything and destroy frontline buildings, but it didn't seem like the damage was really working properly in the build we received, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, I may be wearing a tinfoil hat here, but it's also entirely possible that the flamethrowers themselves will not interact with the buildings the way we think, and instead they will be used to simply clear out and kill infantry instead of completely putting the structure up in flames. To complement this, we now have new incendiary and high explosive rockets, which looks like they will be the heavy hitters of fire damage. These high explosive rockets are fired from the new rocket artillery vehicles, the Colony Retour and the Warden Skycaller. First of all, I absolutely love how cinematic this looks, and the sound is incredibly threatening. It really feels like the old school videos of Soviet Katyusha batteries, and I just think the devs really nailed it. And as you can see here, our volley was able to catch the barn on fire. And although the Colonials only have high explosive rounds, with the Wardens having incendiary, it's obvious that any type of rocket barrage will now be able to start a fire. Just one might be a little bit more effective than the other. To balance this, it appears that the Colonial variants will have a much longer range, going up to 200 meters, while the Warden ones will only be 150 meters. If you are able to get in range and catch some things on fire, the structure that is lit up is unable to be repaired with BMATs until the fire is put out, which you can now do by using another new feature, water. 
Water can be bottled or filled up with a bucket. And if you want to put a fire out, you'll have to get a line of players to bucket over water and douse the flames. But be careful because if you get too close, you'll get an indicator that you're heating up. And after a certain amount of time, you could burst into flames. As we can see here, where a player is running out on fire from the barn, and eventually you just see the little backpack indicating they've turned into a charred heap. It's a really interesting mechanic, and after a few minutes of fire damage, it did look as if the structure was slowly ticking down in health, meaning that it's effective enough to require players to eventually deal with the fire, but it's not too heavy-handed that it could cause a huge problem if left unattended for a little bit while defenders are trying to fight off players elsewhere. I'm kind of imagining a new class of firefighters in and around front lines and towns that keep water handy, which just adds a really cool dynamic to the game. Now, not only are we getting rocket trucks, but 1.0 is also releasing a whole host of new vehicles. There will be modifications to existing tank chassis, like the new Gallagher Thornfall Mark III, affectionately called the Bone Law due to its eight mounted bone saws on an outlaw body, the 85VG Talos, which has an enormous 75mm turret slapped on the hull of a falchion, and even two completely new classes of tanks. The first is the Battle Tank, and if you've played Foxhole for a while, you're probably familiar with these that were removed over a year and a half ago. They were a much bigger tank that required up to six crew members, with slots inside the tank for an engineer that needed to reload the ammunition, as well as being able to safely repair without having to dismount. These tanks would also fire special, heavier ammunition, and these have been finally reintroduced with the Warden Flood Mark I and the Colonial Lance 36. Additionally, not only are we getting bigger battle tanks, but we're also getting the Super Heavy Tank, a new, enormous type of tank that will be an absolute beast on the field. The Wardens will receive the Cullen Predator Mark III, and the Colonials get the O75B Ares. The Ares has a dual high-velocity 75mm cannon, and this new type of heavy ammunition deals explosive damage, meaning it will be viable both for anti-tank and anti-structure use. The Predator has one giant high-velocity 94.5mm cannon, and these 94.5mm rounds are a much longer specialized anti-tank round, but it also has two four-barreled grenade launchers in the back, which can fire frag grenades, smokes, gas grenades, and also high explosive tremolas. There's obviously two completely different playstyles with these tanks, and after playing around with them a little bit, I can see them both being used effectively if field with supporting infantry and vehicles. But to be honest, just seeing the sheer size of these things are enough to cause people on the front lines to freak out. It's designs like this that make me really appreciate Foxhole, and the world building and aesthetic is just so well done. The devs stated that they took inspiration from the landships and giant, overly large tank designs from World War II, and I really think that they nailed it. You don't want to straight copy the real world, and I think these two tanks are perfect on their own, with obvious references to historical vehicles. Now, combat is all fine and good, right? But I know a lot of you guys out there might be like me and think, okay, these damage values might not be final. I don't really want to get too sucked into the nitty gritty of damage values and tank balance and what can kill what, but uh, weren't there supposed to be trains? This is, this is a train update, right? Don't worry, I did not forget about the trains. Voxel Inferno will officially introduce trains to the game, and they come in the form of a small gauge minecart and a larger locomotive. And both of these will run on player-built tracks and rail systems and are now integrated in new player-driven industrial centers called facilities. Now, although a lot of players were expecting trains, facilities are a complete surprise. Facilities are essentially player-built industry and will allow both wardens and colonials to establish their own logistics and industrial hubs to complement standard lodgy hubs in the usual towns we're used to. These facilities will be created by laying a gravel foundation made from a new material created by refining coal, another new resource which you can mine, and then building whatever you want from a CV. There are ramps, different sized platforms, and even the ability to create your own dock with player-made cranes. So it really makes you feel like you can customize the world how you see fit. Oh, and before we get too sucked into facilities, you can also place your own gravel provisional roads, which is a huge quality of life feature. Now, once you get your gravel and you lay your foundation, you can then create your industry. Although we weren't able to check out everything on this closed test, it appears that the flow of the facility is this. You create a gravel platform and design however you want to lay out the foundation for your facility. You then build a power plant and materials facility using BMATs. This power plant starts off by running off of diesel to power the buildings, which then has to be routed through via poles and power lines and then scaled as necessary in order to manage the wattage. 
Once you have power, your materials facility will be able to process and create construction mats or C mats, which are then used to make more advanced structures. With your newly created C mats, you will then be able to create the following. An oil refinery, which can refine crude oil into a variety of processed oils used for manufacturing. A coal refinery, which can process coal and create coke and sulfur used for steel and other materials. Resource transfer stations, which can hold raw material for staging and interfacility transport. Liquid transfer stations, which will hold liquid and can be routed to various facilities for further processing via pipes. Material transfer stations, which palletize end product. The metal works, which can create processed construction materials or PC mats and pipes, which will be used for those advanced structures. And finally, the light vehicle assembly station, which can modify vehicles and turn them into any variant of your choosing. This is a lot, and I'm sure some of y'all had your eyes glaze over during this description, while others just went now and uninstalled Factorio, so you can now simply focus on Foxtorio. Logi mains are out there, and the amount of depth the devs have now created with facilities is insane, and players can now fully customize, optimize, and specialize these logistics areas as much as they want. I will have a much more in-depth look at everything you can do with the facility buildings when we do get access to the full branch, but I can say with complete confidence that this is game-changing. Not only will you be able to create your own industry, but the vehicle assembly areas that they allow introduce a new gameplay loop as well. If you're unfamiliar with Foxhole Tech, most wars each faction is required to choose between one cool thing and another cool thing, with only one of those being the optimum choice, requiring everyone to wait weeks until they get through the tech tree and they're able to now tech the worst option and finally get to play with it. These assembly areas, however, will now let you take the base variant and upgrade them to whatever you want independent of your faction's tech choice. And this goes for more than just simple logistics vehicles. Let's take the Colonial Falchion tank, for example, and expand on the possibilities. This tank is known as the MPT, or Mass Production Tank, because you get five of them to a crate compared to every other vehicle in the game, which gives you three per crate. The tank is a bit weaker, but at scale, it's extremely cost effective. Now, you can send waves and waves of these cheap mass produced falchions and then send them to a player created tank modification facility where you would then upgrade them all to much more specialized tanks, like the advanced armor package and better turret with the Spatha, or maybe you can install the anti structure 75mm gun and become a new Talos tank. This flexibility allows for a complete war industry sandbox, and I absolutely love it. Additionally, something that people might have missed is that it appears that these facilities are faction neutral, meaning that it's entirely possible that wardens could siege a colonial facility instead of simply destroying it and eventually take it over for themselves. Since the cost to create these things is so incredibly high, it would make sense for both factions to try and limit damage to them if possible, or even raise their own facilities on a retreat to prevent the enemy from having it. I say this because at the light vehicle assembly I was at, I was able to interact with it as a warden, and I received warden blueprints, yet the players next to me were colonial, and when they interacted with it, they were able to create colonial modifications. And as I walked around, every single industrial structure there was built by a colonial, but I could still interact with it. Everybody could interact with it, and I really believe that this will be the case as the devs in their dev chat stream the other day mentioned facilities as an important strategic objective that should be taken as seriously as Logi Towns. And if these enormous resource dumps weren't able to be secured, they wouldn't really be nearly as important. On top of that, advanced facilities will have enough development to create in-game material and vehicles, with things like the ammunition factory making the new flame fuel, 75mm shells, 94.5mm shells, and rocket ammo, but also 300mm storm cannon ammo. Modification centers will allow you to vet tanks, making them have stronger armor and health, which typically takes weeks to progress through a tech tree in order to get to. And it appears that the only way to make things like battle tanks and super tanks are through these advanced vehicle assembly stations. As shown here on the dev slide, but also when we were in game, we had a colonial go check the garage and we noticed that you couldn't even choose to build one of these tanks in a garage. If in-game tanks and ammo are only able to be built in facilities, insane amount of time and energy will be spent on optimizing them for production, but also protection. And as a result, the enemy is going to want to raid and sabotage them as well. Taking out a logistics town might be a pain since you have to wait a few days for tech to progress, but destroying a super heavy tank facility or even capturing it for yourself could be a huge turning point and snowball in the war. 
Now I could get stuck on facilities for probably an hour. So instead I'll just upload a cut up version of my entire stream I had later today. So that way y'all can feel free to flip through it as you wish. There's a lot more discussion on the logic side of things there since it was about four whole hours as well as additional testing for things that just didn't make this in the video. So do check it out if you want. All right, so one huge compliment to the facility is the long-awaited train system. Not only are we getting large locomotives, as we mentioned earlier, we're getting the smaller gauge rail cars that can be used for intra-facility transport, moving raw material from one end of the facility to the other, or even moving out of the facility to a resource field, making it easier to transfer raw material for processing. These smaller train cars have the ability to carry coal in a coal car, or you can stack small pallets on the flatbed car. Although both run on coal, one feature the larger locomotive has is that if you have a friend act as a fireman, you will then be able to shovel coal into the furnace and speed boost your train, which makes for driving it actually a lot of fun. The devs did mention that the physics in the train of the build that we had weren't really in yet, so we couldn't test blocking train routes and things like that. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see the things like the combat train cars, infantry transport cars, and of course the mobile storm cannon car. But it was incredibly obvious that the train system was extremely fleshed out. You can hook cars up to each other, move the train backwards, jump out and flip rail switches at junctions to change directions, and the tracks themselves are completely customizable and player made. This was just a small taste, but I can't wait to see the enormous train station players will end up creating. Overall, Foxhole Inferno is shaping up to be a huge improvement on the sandbox aspect of the game. The devs are giving the players the tools to do everything themselves, and whereas some people might think certain mechanics are convoluted and frustrating, others may see this as an opportunity to create an industrial system of their dreams, not unlike trying to perfect a run-through of Satisfactory or Factorio. Frontline officers may be important, but I think we'll see mid and backline foremen being just as crucial to the war effort. Like I said earlier, there is a lot to unpack in Foxhole 1.0, and as we get closer to the release date and new war starting on September 28th, I'll make sure to do a little bit more focused breakdowns of the new mechanics since we'll be able to get our hands on the public dev branch on September 13th, with a full list of patch notes for 1.0 coming out later this week. But what do you guys think? Are facilities going to be faction neutral? Are you looking forward to upgrading your tanks? Or do you just want to roleplay as a firefighter? Let me know in the comments below since I think this update has a little of something for everyone. But that's it for me. Let me know. And until next time, peace. What do I not know? <laughs> Welcome. Oh, oh, come on! What? That's so toxic!